All right, welcome to biology. Here is uh, our first screencast, section one of chapter one, in which we contemplate what it means to be alive, because of course, as you know, biology is the study of, of life. Now, you, of course, are alive, and so um, you should have some insights into what it means to being alive. But of course, you have a particular way of viewing the world and what it means to be alive compared to, say, this, this snow goose here, or this sunflower, or this moral mushroom. These things are all alive, but they clearly are uh, living their lives in different ways. Um, but they do have some basic characteristics that all living things share, as we'll see. Um, now, some of them are unicellular, but again, they show those characteristics. These guys down here, the bacteria and Mr. Paramecium here. And others are multicellular, larger, more complex, but again, share the same characteristics. Um, we'll see that living things are, have organization to them. And that is, living things aren't just these random uh, batches of cells and tissues and stuff, but there's an order, an organization to it. Um, now, in this first uh, unit, first quarter, first semester will be largely down at this end. And that is, we're going to start with some, some basic chemistry and then some biochemistry and then some cell biology. So we'll be spending a lot of time on that. Um, and we'll see how taking these non-living things, atoms, if you will, I mean, they're not alive. They don't have the characteristics of living things. But when we put them together in certain ways, we can construct molecules that then when you put those molecules together, you can get cells and cells will start to exhibit the characteristics of life. And of course, when we put a bunch of cells together, we get larger structures and a bunch of these structures together, we get a complex organism like us. So again, we'll be studying beginning largely at this end, um, but we will work our way up into the ecology. And we'll talk a little bit about ecology here at the beginning, but I hope to cover it in more depth towards the end of the year. And so these are just our different levels of organization. Again, we have non-living atoms that can make molecules and bigger molecules. And the things that we see in living organisms, the structures that we see. But then we'll see when you take groups of organisms and put them together, we have what we call communities and ecosystems. And that's the field of ecology, where you're studying these groups of organisms interacting with each other. Um, and again, biology can be practiced pretty much at any of these levels. You can be a biochemist. You can be a cell biology. Um, you can study whole organisms. Or you can study groups of organisms in these ecological communities. Now, in our book, in section one, are the five ways in which our book defines life. And so, of course, that's what one thing we already talked about, being organized. All right, again, they're not just random groups of atoms. They are organized. And we'll see that when you put those atoms together into molecules and bigger, mo bigger molecules, you get what we call emergent properties. And that is... You put two things together that have certain characteristics, but or by themselves they have certain characteristics, but when you put them together, they have unique characteristics or emergent properties, properties that only are exhibited when you put those two things together. That's an important thing. Um, living things also uh, acquire and make use of energy, and they use that to maintain homeostasis. We'll talk about what that is. Um, living things interact with their surroundings. They're not these um, non-reactive players. You have to take things in from your environment and release things into your environment. Um, that's a uh, characteristic of living things. Uh, and of course, living things have to pass on their genes and make more of their kind so they reproduce. 
Um, and also during their lives, they grow and develop and change. Um, and then living things can adapt to their surroundings. Um, there's a certain what in biology we call, and we'll explain this term a little more, plasticity. And that is you're born with a certain way of being, but that form can change a bit over time depending on your surroundings. We'll, we'll look at examples of that in class. OK, that's um, our introduction. Uh, again, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And we will talk about these things in class. See you later.